But most of what I've heard you talking about has been about the distribution of income rather than about the distribution of wealth. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't argue, at least I hope you wouldn't, that the person in, let's Don't say, sure. let's say <laughs> India is genetically inferior, say, to the person in America. It's rather through the purely arbitrary circumstance of birth that he's in a country with a less developed economy and, or in a family that doesn't have as large a share of the capital. That's and that's right. that not something that he's to blame for. Well, I'm not so blaming anybody. Even if the free market system equitably works and everyone progresses an equal amount, that person who started out with less, a lesser share of the capital is still going to end up with a lesser share of the capital. That's right. And there's nothing in the free market system that's going to enable him to make up for what was a purely arbitrary deficit in the first place. And given that the kind of people who become successful capitalists do not become that way by giving away their wealth voluntarily, isn't it necessary to forcibly redistribute wealth before you can begin to operate under a capitalist system? No, it is not. The only way in which you can redistribute effectively the wealth is by destroying the incentives to have wealth. And the question is, what is the way, what is the system which will offer those people who are so unlucky as to be born without uh, good positions, what is the system which will offer them the greatest opportunity? Well, one possible way of redistributing the wealth without affecting the incentives to earn as much income as possible is simply to have a 100% inheritance tax. Uh, but Since that, that won't not, affect the incentives, it's only after the person's I dead your, anyway. I beg your pardon. Uh, you're too, uh, I'm afraid, uh, uh, I don't know the family you come from. <laughs> I don't, uh, but as you grow up, you will discover that this is really a family society and not an individual society. We tend to talk about an individualist society, but it really isn't. It's a family society. And the greatest incentives of all, the incentives that have really driven people on, have largely been the incentives of family creation, of family of pursuing, of establishing their families on a decent system. What is the effect of 100% inheritance tax? The percent of a 100% inheritance tax is to encourage people to dissipate their wealth in high living. What's they can't the harm in that? It. The harm in that is that where do you get the factories? Where do you get the machines? Where do you get the capital investment? Where do you get the incentive to improve technology? If what you're doing is to establish a society in which the incentive is for people who, if they have by accident accumulate some wealth, to waste it in frivolous entertainment. You know, the thing is that the thing that is amazing that people don't really recognize is the extent to which the market system has, in fact, encouraged people and enabled people to work hard and sacrifice in what I must confess I often regard as an irrational way for the benefit of their children. One of the most curious things to me in observation is that almost all people value the utility which their children will get from consumption higher than they value their own. Here are parents who have every reason to expect that their children will have a higher income than they ever had. And they scrimp and save in order to be able to leave something for their children. I think you are sort of like a bull in a china shop if you talk about the 100% inheritance tax having no incentive effects. It would destroy a continuing society. It would destroy a society. <laughs>